So please, tell us what your name is. Uh, my name's Everett, and I'm an intern here. Awesome. Where, where are you originally from? San Francisco area, California. Nice. So for all of our Californias watching out there, this is one of yours, and he's one of, we're borrowing him, so thank you. Um, so Everett, tell us, just start from the beginning, man. Yeah, so I grew up basically no knowledge of the Bible, no knowledge about Jesus, just typical secular upbringing, no Sunday school, nothing like that. And, uh, you know, as life progressed, I started wondering, you know, the deeper questions because what I was grew up with didn't explain everything. So in high school, I started, you know, dabbling uh, with the spiritual questions, philosophical questions and I sort of got into Buddhism, meditation, started smoking marijuana, getting a little hippie-ish, you know, trying to, you know, I loved the deep questions, going deep and stuff like that. So, um, and then as college came around, I, I still loved this and it was my passion, like philosophy and, and spirituality. But I, I, I took a degree in business just for the practical reasons, because I like studying that on my own. So... I started meeting a lot of people because I went to Boulder, which is like the new age capital of the United States. And I started meeting a lot of people in the new age and I thought it was fascinating. And um, more and more, I just knew that the supernatural was real and that what I was learning in psychology and in, and in uh, addressing sort of mental health, it, it, there was a cap, you know, it didn't explain everything about the nature of the mind and, and thoughts and, and emotions. So I knew that the supernatural was real. And, you know, I started witnessing, uh, you know, people who, who were tormented in ways that, that psychology couldn't explain, you know, that were supernatural in, in their nightmares and their dreams and in ways like that. And so I met a lot of people in the New Age who seemed to have uh, known how to address these things with their own little modalities, their own healing modalities. I was so into healing. I was looking for, like, what is the best way to heal? You know, there are so many people suffering. I went through my bout of depression, anxiety. Uh, I fractured my back in high school. I had to quit football. That's when I started smoking a lot of weed and, and getting into those things. So, you know, I had my own issues. But um, I was so passionate about finding what is the, the, the ideal way to heal. And, and how can I help those around me? I really felt called towards helping others um, just as my calling. And, and so in, in Boulder, I just met a lot of people who, who psychics, uh, uh, channelers, uh, you know, energy, energy healers, and these types of modalities that I was sort of experimenting in, trying to look for, you know, what was effective. Um, little did I know there's a big dark realm of that. And you're opening a lot of doors that you don't realize. And that deception's real. Even if you have good intentions, if you're deceived, you are going to pay for it. And it could cost your soul, literally. And I didn't realize that until, you know, I was saved by Jesus Christ, which I never in a million years would have thought would be happening to me. I, like, the whole word Christian, Christianity, just felt like outdated, old, uh, religion to control people, you know, it's just some, some old things. So I didn't really know much about it, but these kind of uh, supernatural things started happening to me, and um, one of them was I was just having lunch with my friend, and I get a FaceTime on my phone, and I pull out the my phone, and I'm like, oh, it's from a guy named Luke Abel, and I'm like, Luke Abel, and I'm like trying to think about his name. Oh, this is a guy, on freshman year, on campus who said, hey, do you believe in God? And he like tried to have a conversation with me and I'm like, oh, I love these types of conversations, you know, not 100% sure whether God's real, blah, blah, told him a little about Buddhism. And uh, we exchanged numbers just because I wanted to be nice to him. Never ended up doing Bible study or, or talking or anything like that. But uh, three years later, here he is FaceTiming me. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have lunch with my friend. And later that day, I said, hey, what's up, man? And he's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, you FaceTimed me. And he's like, no, I didn't. And, and then he's like, number one, I don't FaceTime people. And number two, you're three years back in my texts. And I'm like, okay, the only, the only possible reasons for this is either he's like some psychotic religious dude trying to convert me with this weird, you know, making me think this is some crazy thing, or 
maybe it was some sort of glitch or, you know, maybe there's something divine here. Or maybe he's lying. So I'm like, all right, I, I felt something just divine about it. And then the curiosity of like, I want to look into this guy's eyes and, and ask him, like, did you click FaceTime? Like, did you, did you call me? So that was an element, but I felt something divine kind of pushing me towards learning about Christianity because I learned about all the other different religions and kind of modalities, but never really gave any thought to the Bible, you know, or to Christianity. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to go learn about this. And I did Bible study with him uh, once a week, and uh, he was praying over me, teaching me the basics, you know, the wages of sin is death, and Jesus lived a perfect sinless life for us. And he died for us on the cross. And all we have to do is to believe in him to be saved. And uh, I was like, oh, man, this, I feel sorry for this guy. You know, he's, 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 he, this guy is just settling, settling for this, you know, to feel good. You know, he's settling for Christianity just to feel good and not explore the real deeper questions. So part of it was like me trying to help him with his deception. And... Uh, <laughs> So like a month and a half go by, and he's really just trying to convert me, trying to, you know, bring salvation. And, and I'm just like, you know, uh, I, I felt he was a little too pushy. I'm like, I'm going to go study it on my own. And uh, so we stopped doing Bible study. We stay in contact a little. I try reading the Bible, walk into class. I'm reading like Habakkuk or something, not really knowing where to start. And uh, I end up putting it down for a while. But I started... God was there moving, and I started in my life in the New Age and, and in, this, in this quest for, for searching, you know, the demonic, you know, because entities are real. I would see people channel entities. Their whole body would change, and they'd do automatic handwriting. They, they'd have these, like, divine uh, teachings and doctrines about, you know, the nature of reality and souls and psychics and all these things and talking to the dead where they can literally tell you what, you know, your, your, your parent was like. So you start to believe these things. You're like, wow, this is fascinating. You know, every human has these capabilities, and everyone should activate these capabilities. That's what I thought. So, um, you know, I'm going, I'm doing my meditation. I'm trying to, you know, just maximize life in every single way. I, I honestly believed that there was an evil force. I, I believed in Satan before I believed in Jesus, because I knew there was an evil force attacking people, trying to dumb people down, trying to, to, to make people depressed and kill themselves. And I really felt called towards fighting that. So my quest in the new age was, you know, I thought I was like a light worker, you know, trying to bring light to where there was darkness. And um, so I, I see these entities and I start watching Bob Larson because I, I start researching the demonic and I read a few of his books uh, another, like, some, like, Catholic uh, one, and then some other New Age entity removal books. And uh, so I'm really diving into the, to the subject, and uh, I'm watching a lot of Bob Larson, like, man, there's something going on here. There's definitely something going on. This guy has a gifting. This guy has some sort of, you know, a supernatural ability. So I'm trying to, people in my life who are, you know, I'm, I'm trying to help, I'm trying to look for, like, the demonic root, because there are people you know, involved in, 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 you know, worshiping these astrology goddesses and these spirits and things. And, you know, I, from what I was watching, like, that seems a little sketch. You know, there's good and there's bad entities, but I didn't really know what meant a good and a bad spirit. So I started having encounters with people manifesting and me being able to sense these things. And it would manifest just like a Bob video, but it was a smirk the whole time. It was a little laugh. And then, and then they would come back and say, oh, what's happening? And it would, be, it would be like what a Bob video does. And I was trying to use my new age techniques. I was trying to use my meditation techniques just to, to push it out, you know, with my light that I've been building my light through meditation and, and no fear and all these things. <laughs> Nothing was working. Nothing was working. And after a really big one, you know, that I, I, I honestly felt like I was... I honestly felt guilty after this one. I'm like, you know, I don't know if this is, you know, multiple personality or, a, or an inner child or maybe it's a spirit that this person was, because this person was channeling entities, but they were tormented. They had suicidal thoughts. They had depression, and I wanted to, to do what I could to help that. And um, so after one big event, I look, and I'm like, I need to know what this is. What is this? And I look up Bob Larson, and I look on his schedule, and he's in my town in a month. And so I'm like, oh, sweet. Like, I'm seeing this guy. I've seen him on TV, on YouTube. I got to meet this guy. So I call his office, and I talk to his assistant, and I ask him, I'm like, 
is there any way I can meet with Bob one on one? And she's like, yeah, you can just schedule an appointment. And I'm like, uh, okay. And she's like, let me check and, and see if he has any appointments pretty last minute. So she goes on hold and she says, yeah, we have one appointment left out of like some 40 that he had scheduled for that week that he was in Denver. And I'm like, book it. Booked it right away. And I brought two of my friends who were unbelievers as well to his seminar. And we witnessed this woman who had been tormented with a spirit, uh, uh, divorces, uh, horrible relationships with men. You could feel her soul just struggling. You know, we, our heart, we could just feel something in that room going through. And multiple people manifested. And we saw the power of Jesus Christ. And this demon was scared. This demon was so scared of Jesus and this crucifix that Bob was holding up to it. And we were like, wow, like... There's, this is real. And, and then she was delivered, and then just this massive love just came throughout the room, and everyone was just in such an amazing state of, like, love and, and joy. And then I go up on prayer line to talk to one of his ministers, and he's, he's trying to tell me, like, you have no authority over these things unless you have the authority of Christ, unless you have the Holy Spirit. And you don't get that until you confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Come on, let's just take a moment there. <laughs> That's our authority. And, uh, you know, I'm like, you know, I still think Jesus is some enlightened guy. You know, he knew of some other knowledge to give this power. Maybe there's something here, but maybe he, I don't think he's God. You know, I don't think he's God in flesh. But right next to me, this guy's fully manifesting. Like, like right, and I'm like talking to this guy. I don't even want to be talking to him. I just want to be looking at this guy getting a demon cast out of him by one of Bob's ministers. And then another dude next to me. And my two friends are like, what is this? This is insane. And, um, and we end up talking to a lot of people there, and they're all just so nice. And, uh, but I don't, I, I, I'm still kind of like, no, you know, they got to do more research. Got to do more research. I'm not sure. So we leave, and the next day is my appointment with Bob. And uh, one-on-one, meet him in the lobby. We go up the elevator. We go into this suite in the hotel, and he's got four of his ministers there. He's like, all right, if they're in here, I'm like, yeah, that's good. The first 40 minutes of our, our, our talk was just debating, just spiritual topics, the Bible, the, the claims of the Bible, all these things, everything that I believed, why I believed it. We were just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And, uh, but during this time, I just felt this conviction kind of brewing in me. And uh, it came to a point where I remember just looking away from Bob, looking out the window, and this massive sense of importance came across me. And just fell on me. And something so important came over me. And I'm like, you know, is this really what life's about? You know, is this just believing in Jesus Christ? Just believing, you know? And I I felt this such strong importance. Why aren't, why is it so hard to just believe this? And um, I felt my soul was in danger, honestly, at this stubbornness. There was this stubbornness in me. So I'm like, I eventually make up in my mind, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't want this stubbornness anymore. And, and I, I, I feel like, I feel like there's something here. And I look at Bob and I say, Bob, I'm ready. And he looks at me, he's like, cause it, the point was just getting, it was getting drawn out. You know, nothing was, nothing was happening. I'm like, I'm ready. Just out of nowhere. He's like, so he puts his hand on me. He leads me through this sinner's salvation's prayer. And at this moment I knew my whole life was going to change. You know. Amen. Come on. That's worthy of a little bit of praise, guys. Amen. And, uh, you know, I said the prayer, and the moment I opened my eyes from that prayer, I just started bawling and weeping and his love just consumed me and I had an encounter with Jesus and it, and, and it felt like this all of this all of this sin that I didn't even know was sin that was in me I felt so sorry but then instant forgiveness instant love he had been with me my whole life he had been sending me these signs and I was continuously rebelling in ways but he was sending me coming after me seeking me and this love like he knew my soul more than Anyone in my whole life knew my soul more than I knew who I was. He knew me more than I could even imagine. And I was just weeping and bawling. And all of the ministers were around me. Everyone was crying. And uh, I got up and I thanked Bob. I thanked all of them. And I, I left that place and got into my car and just 
boom, started crying again. <laughs> crying and crying and crying. I couldn't believe it, you know? I felt like a new person. I literally felt like it was the most important moment of my whole life that my whole life had been leading up to. And, um, and I just kept crying. And the next day, I, I went home. The next day, I bought a Bible. I put in worship music, and I just stuck my face in that and tried to understand it as much as I could. I'm like, I am so far behind. I got to know the truth. This is the truth, you know? And, um, and um, so that one month after I was saved, I cried more than the previous 10 years, just at, in awe at his love, honestly. That's what it was, and just how, and it's some repentance too of things that I did not want to live with anymore. Things that I didn't even know I had in my soul, character flaws, you know, things in my thoughts and my intentions were just so impure, and I didn't want to live with that anymore. And in His grace, month by month, month by month, just things just started leaving me. Just problems I had, loneliness and depression and hopelessness that I didn't even know were down there. They just were leaving me. And that's what I see as the grace of God. I wasn't doing anything. I was just being with Jesus, fixing my eyes on Jesus. And all these things I was trying to meditate through and help myself heal from were being healed without me knowing. Only months later, I realized they were, they were gone from my life. And Amen. Amen. Now, you were a pretty popular guy, still are a pretty popular guy. Um, you had a pretty big circle of friends. Can you tell me a little bit about what that started to look like? Yeah, so, you know, I knew that something massive changed with me. And um, <laughs> I knew that I, want my, I wanted my friends to know. You know, I wanted my friends to experience what I experienced. So with I would tell them my testimony, my close friends, and hallelujah, many of them were saved and gave them li their lives to Christ. Um, and then others, you know, that I was just associates with in the New Age, there's, I had no desire, you know, I had no desire. And there were, there were, there were some who were very against Christ who, you know, I couldn't, couldn't tell them to. There were others who I did try to tell, you know. But, um, yeah, and then, and then my mom ended up accepting Christ months later. And... and God's been moving in my whole family, and in every heart, he's just been working and working and working, and, uh, you know, I believe he's going to move even more powerfully, and, and all of my friends and all my family, and, uh, yeah, it's just so amazing. He's so good. Yes, he absolutely is. So, okay, so now I know that there are going to be some of you that are dabbling in New Age. It just is what it is. You're hearing a testimony here about the true power that is found alone in Christ, and you have somebody here that can testify directly. So please tell us, and for those who are watching, who may be dabbling New Age, Buddhism, meditation, all that stuff, what is your, what is your advice to them? You know, I would say research Jesus. He is, he is not just some other enlightened human. He is unique, and he is different than everyone else and everything else. He is God. And if you want to know him, just reach out to him. Just, just call out to him and he will reveal himself to you. And there is no power greater than his power. There is no force in the universe greater than his force. And there's no goodness and light and holiness greater than his holiness. And if you just reach out to him, he will reveal himself to you. And his love will consume you. And he knows you more than you know yourself. If you're seeking right now, you're meditating, you know, you're experimenting with drugs, trying to find the secret to life. The truth is in Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen.